We had mentioned deep uh, subject. This, yeah, it is a deep subject. We have a story about three holes in the ground. Well, well, well. Yes. Anyway, we have a couple of new items that we got that um, we had talked about this back when it was a Kickstarter, and I got mine in. This is the Altel. This is the uh, flip filter. Now, I haven't really had a chance to use this, so this is just going to be. You can a, tell how new it is. It's hard to open the yeah, box. Yeah, as a first look. It's not going to be a review at this point, but look, they can do. They got I like tools. the way they marked it. Tools. <laughs> we got tools, in case you didn't know. My understanding that this is for. Is give you or to handle it, so you get a, so you know, you get a grip so you, when you're tr when you're putting it on. Yeah, you're putting it on or taking and, it and off. And by the way, folks, when you're not using it for the lens, you can open jars with it. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a nice case too that it comes in. Well, there it is, and uh, what this will screw into. Now this one's for a 77 millimeter, which all my uh, lenses are 77 millimeter filter sizes, so that kind of nice. Well, that's nice. And I got having problems use an adapter. It. Yeah, it's got a little magnet in there, holds it together. I was going to say, it worked great nice. during rehearsal. But, um, and as you can see, it's still, I haven't even taken this apart yet. But what we're going to do is check this out. And the idea this is it'll go into your filter holder on your lens, and then you can fil flip your filters up like this. This will be especially useful if you're doing the real strong ND filters, like ND6, 9, because right. they're almost and impossible to see. That way you can frame up, and when you get it framed, it down. you just flip right. this down. It's got a little magnet that holds it shut, and then you right. can take your shot. So, What's really cool is I noticed a tag on it, and Jim explained to me what that does is that the actual piece that allows it to uh, yeah, screw it into... Screws in. Apparently, I think what they did is just right. make different rings. These rings are the... the for different, different sizes, sizes right. rather than make a whole new mechanism for which is different kind of sizes, cool which because, makes sense. Let's face it, let's, if you have it's more than one lens... cheaper to produce, yeah. Not only cheaper to produce, but if you have more than one lens, you don't have to buy a separate uh, whole body piece. You could probably just buy the insert. Yep. I would which imagine. is really cool. So and the magnets are quite strong. Yeah, they are. As far as well, you saw me trying to get that, so they're not going to fall apart. you notice how easy I did it. So yes, I know. must be too many moving parts. Well, when you hit my age, you get arthritis. Oh, is that what it is? That's what it is. So. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I didn't know they got arthritis in the brain. No, this is in the fingers. <laughs> I wasn't opening with my breath. Open. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't doesn't say work, doesn't work. telepathy. <laughs> well. All right, anyway. That's That's mine. That's your book. Report. So, well, thank you for tuning in. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah. Let's just edit Fred's whole piece That's out. That's right. So, Fred, what do you got there? I think you got something really special that, hey, uh, before you get into that, well, I had to mention that back in the days, the film days, we needed dark rooms yes. or labs to do our film processing. Today, now we need like Photoshop and Lightroom, our which computers. requires, yeah. Right. The biggest thing about That's that is that a desktop computer is a little hard to take around with you if you travel a lot. Right. So if you do any kind of travel photography or going to workshops or, or any of that, so, it's nice to have yep. a good laptop. And I had showed off earlier my uh, HP ZBook, and right. you got the new This is the Dell, Dell XPS. 15-inch. Right. And what's nice about the newer systems is that they seem bigger because the screens are edge to edge. There's no bezel all Correct. the way around. Yep. Or the bezel on this is so tiny that it's pretty much an edge to edge mm -hmm. screen. Uh, basically starts up quite quickly. It's using, um, you know, SSD technology. And it's Windows 10, I assume. This one's Windows 10. This one, um, you can get them. It depends on the model you get. Some of them are home, some of them are pro. Mm -hmm. Either way, they work well. I see it's got a light up keyboard. Backlit uh, keyboard. keyboard. It also... Uh, this one has a touch screen. There was two models within the same group. One is not, one is. This is not detachable. No, it does it fold back, so it's not so a true two-in-one. It, so it's not a hybrid that will act can't like a tablet. Can't detach or flip it back, no. Does it... It is touchable. Can you get a pen? No, you, you, you can't use a finger. Pen okay. I haven't looked into that, but it's basically just a touch screen for hand. They may have a pen that goes with it um, for people who want to use that. It's basically, and you can see, beautiful 4K screen. Yep. And... Um, what and I should mention to talk about the screen. Yes, that this has an NVIDIA card yes. in it, so that's important, especially if you're interested in uh, video and After Effects or any of the higher end graphics right. programs, games <laughs> for those who play games, because right. the graphics card handles all that important. It uh, does. There's two drivers that you can use. Mm -hmm. You can download both of them, but for 
gaming, there is a game driver, right. what they call the game ready driver for it. If you're doing what I'm going to be using it for, there's what they call the RTS yeah, driver. I don't play games either. So, so the RTS, and, and the nice thing about it, it's already downloaded. You go into the what they call the NVIDIA experience, you can mm -hmm. flip between them. Yeah. And it's actually not that hard once you've downloaded both sets of, of drivers. So I'm using the RTS Studio. And Premiere actually uses the NVIDIA drivers yes. in order to do real-time in many cases, uh, effects processing, and so right. After Effects as well, and even Blender for the people who are doing three. Blender, the new stuff. version of Blender will be yes handling the this. Eva Evi uses the NVIDIA, so uh, that's important. Uh, so that's why you just can't buy a two hundred dollar laptop out there and expect to be able to do all this. No, stuff. you're going to spend a little bit more for these, but the the idea is it's fast. This is a six core, mm -hmm. which means it has twelve threads. I seven, right? So I seven. It's, ver it's the ninth generation. They just come out with the 10th, so of course these are going to start dropping a little bit in price. But the 10s are so new that they're uh, not that many on the market How yet. How about uh, SD slots and uh, ports? You got a place to put your SD cards? or? Yes, actually it uses a very small one. If you look here, it's not the full size. The really? full size sticks out too far, so you can buy these, which are actually much smaller. Well, and it'll take the SD, so... Well, it is an SD. Size. I'm using the mini, I mean, but the it'll, micro. It'll, use, it'll take a full size because in your camera... Right, but it sticks out. Yeah, but I mean, if you but transfer you can't put your it in images, there. yeah. But okay. what they've done is that you can buy these aftermarket, mm -hmm. and then you can put a mini... Because they're flat. ...in yep. there, and then it will go almost all the way in. What it does, it leaves just enough out. You can open it with your thumbnail mm, okay. and pull it out. Interesting. So this way you're not smacking it. So I can travel with this on there, but if I want to take the SD card out of my camera... Yeah, I can just take this out and put the other in. What's the next port that you got over there? And then I've got a USB 3.1. Okay. And then this is just my battery level indicator. So when I press that, it should oh, tell me. Oh, okay. So it lights yeah. up to show you how it... Only when it's open, I closed it, so it went on half. Do you know uh, what the battery's supposed to last? Now, I know it's supposed to be 10 hours it on has the same a, book, but realistically, this has maybe a full, three. Right. It has a full-size battery. So far, I have run it several times. And this, for instance, last weekend, I ran it most of the day. I ran it at least four to five hours easily before it said it went into save mode and oh, then I just good. had to charge it. So it'll go into battery save mode to hold it on. Also, it's a smart battery, so the operating system and the hardware will work with it. Sometimes you look at it and it says, oh, you have two hours left and then you're doing less on it and it'll say, oh, you have five hours. Uh, so it'll it'll jump around according to what you're doing. If I was doing a lot with it, one day when I was using Lightroom very heavily, I saw I had a little bit less battery time. But because of that, you have a choice in these. You can get a smaller battery and fit two drives in here, or you can use the full-size battery and just get more battery time. This one has the full-size battery. It is a smart battery. It, do, you, it doesn't overcharge. Mm -hmm. So, And then it, it also adjusts along with hardware and software to, and then the apps that you're using for time. The next would be a HDMI, standard HDMI. That's good. And this is, uh, what's interesting about this, it has the NVIDIA card, but it also has an Intel card that actually is de devoted just to this. That way you're not having to split the card between an external monitor and the internal. And the ZBook has both as well, but right. I'm not sure if it splits it on the HDMI. But the sure. Intel basically has uh, one gig of memory, and the um, NVIDIA has four gigs. Four gig. gigs, right. Right. And that was important to mention. And then you have, this is a USB-C. Mm -hmm. So that is basically for the new Thunderbolt well, that's 3. That's the one that, yeah. You can put it either way. It's the same one you're using to charge a lot of your phones. Yep. And when you put it in there, not only will it accept normal USB-C, not only will it push put out current like the three ones will do and the three zip point O's, but it will actually accept a charge, thirty to forty watt maximum. So yeah. you can use an external device uh, and hook to it, so you don't have to plug it into the power supply all the time. Uh, so you, then you can have charge that. the battery in the Dell. right. It charges the Dell. Yeah, the ZBooks like that too, but right. they say it's really slow. It's slow because it's only 30, 40 watt. When right. you look at my power supply that comes with it, it's like 130 watts. It's watt. better than nothing, but it would be more desirable well, they, to plug it in. Yes. If you're really trying to charge it quickly, that's the way to go. Right. If you're just trying to maintain a charge and you're using it like a, I will be using it for a desktop mm -hmm. as well as my traveling laptop. So I will actually, if I want to, I could get a, they don't call them, they call them um, ports or... Uh, Docks, Docks, but yeah. they don't actually fit on there. You actually use the USB-C, yeah. and then they'll tell you that it's Thunderbolt 3 ready, and that means it will put a 30 to 40 watt charge. It's really just to maintain what you have right. and give a longer life to the battery. It's not to recharge it completely. If it's if you've really charged it down, go ahead and use the power supply because, right. like I said, that's 130 watt. 
And what's the other port that you got over there next to the HDMI? Oh, basically that's so you can put headphones. No, I meant virtual. right in here. Oh, that's the other USB 3.1. Oh, okay. So you got two USB, two USB 3.1s. Three ones and one USB-C. So they're very fast. And then the USB-C. And your head. That's your power, phone. headphones, or external speaker. And they really don't put a lot of, uh, else on there. Your SD card slot and then the other uh, 3.1 USB. So there's not a lot on there. It's not all that heavy, all so, things considered, for as much yeah, as they pack that's into not it. Bad. It's about like the Z book. When you open it up, uh, one thing I've noticed about well, it is the cooling. It's a good solid. Yeah. Peel. They use the brush, uh, aluminum brush metal. Yep. It actually has two fans in it to mm -hmm. keep it cooler because with uh, that i7 running at the top of end, it's going to generate a little bit of heat. And Have so that's all based through here. Any experience using the audio? Now, one of the things that I was critical of in the Z book was the audio is very low. Uh, Despite the fact it's supposed to be Bang and Ols Olsen, it, uh, it was really very, very, I thought, poor right. sound. This is good sound. The only problem with it, the sound basically comes through. They put the speakers where you hear it through here. Uh, and when you have it there, it's actually kind of Well, hitting. I don't know if it's any better because on the Z book, it's at the top. So when you right. have it flipped open, the sound's going. I found if you put something behind it, it directs the sound is better. If, but, you look, if I open this back up, and of course, most of these Of course, you're traveling. You're going to be using headsets right. anyway, probably. And one of the things it does have is a way to optimize your headsets. There's actually two apps in there that mm. will give you an optimized spatial sound for headphones specifically. Mm. They don't have that for the speaker system. They just, it is what it is. Yeah. But if you notice on there, you don't see any speaker or any place where speakers would Oh, yeah, you don't. Where the minor usually over right. on the HP. They're basically big enough that the they're feeding out brightness. the bottom because you've got all this open mm -hmm. at the base for not only for... Uh, you know, moving air to keep it get from overheating, but also that's where the sound comes. So I was actually watching a movie on it just mm. to see how it would look. It was beautiful display, but the sound I had to really keep bumping it up, to, especially when they talk. When there's dialogue, it's always quiet. Of course, when the action starts, it gets really loud. So I don't think it's a to me it's not a movie watching. But you'd say, well, yeah, what about games? Most gamers mm -hmm. and a lot of people who are traveling will use some type of headset. And that's where it really shines, especially with an over-the-ear headset and for the over-the-ear with microphone. A lot of gamers love those, and this is optimized for that. So that that's what you want to do. I wanted to mention that one of my early laptops was the EXP. It was the very first XPS. It was a 13-inch when right. it first came out. And I had a lot of problems with it. But my understanding is Dell has really improved the line. And, of course, right. now they got the 15-inch. Right. They have the I think they still have the 13. They have the 13 and yeah. they have the 15. And the reason I got the 13 at the time because of traveling, it was just lighter and easier to exactly. carry around with me. And it, the reason I but like this is because I, had the, I love the view of the screen. Let's face it, we're not younger. A smaller screen is a little yep. trickier sometimes for us. Well, I had the Dell service department here at least three times fix it. <laughs> the other thing is with a 4K screen mm -hmm. on a 13-inch, if you're watching a true 4K resolution, everything is... You're, I like your way out from it, so yeah. things are a lot well, smaller. Well, especially now, as you're using, like you said, it was a 4K. So, I mean, the Z book was an inch smaller. It's 14 inch. Right. That, but it was uh, using 1080p. Can be yeah, get really, a little bit smaller, even really at 1080. Small. Can you yeah. imagine at 4K? Yep. And it does optimize. It well, that's what it's 4K. Several apps. Oh, it is 4K. Oh, yes, yeah, 4K. I'm sorry. That's right. Yes, yep. it's correct. So. To me, if the 13 would be a little bit small. So you'd, you'd get, in fact, what I did is I went in and asked my text. I just doubled right. the size of it. You can, it and you can do that. Yeah. This Which is that's Windows. Right. And so you can go into Windows, and a lot of times they recommend like 200%, 250%. But yep. It's still going to be much finer detail because yep. you're at a higher resolution. So There's it's as if you're problem with that. away from the screen. Some of the stuff that comes up, like the intro screens and some of the things in the uh, Photoshop, don't recognize that. And so they're still coming out very, very There's a tiny. way around that. Is there? Yes. You actually go into the app itself, go into the properties. Well, yeah. And go into the compatibility and go down and say, ignore the uh, limitations it or the... It works to some extent. I've actually had it work on multiple programs that were doing that. But I have a couple that it doesn't work on, so... And but that the I, problem with it, if they're slightly older programs that don't tell that, but um, one of the places I use Dropbox, and Dropbox is... They said, well, we, you know, nobody's fixed that problem yet. Yeah. But you can go in. The fix is you go in and you go to the compatibility Dropbox, mode. I haven't At had the a very bottom so. of the screen, 
you can say, use your resolution. Don't worry about what Windows is putting out there, and it compensates itself. Uh, the same thing happened with uh, I use a uh, password manager. And the same thing was happening. So I've had a couple of programs that did that, and I was able to fix them using Plugin that. Manager in Photoshop that I was using does that. It comes out as very, very tiny. I think it was the one for the NIC Pro, so you could select them. Mm. It's very small. But there's no place in there to, to change that. Change it, That's, so. Yeah, and I haven't had that issue. Of course, but, NIC was kind of abandoned and picked up. What right. would be your assessment then on the Dell? I know you just got it. You haven't had it that long. But. Overall, and I've been running the heck out of it to see how it'll do. I'm pleased with it. It responds very well. It loads very fast. The type of SSD technology it uses for the drive is actually what they call an uh, NM, uh, what is that? MV, NMVE. Mm -hmm. um, and it is actually a card, but they are supposed to be faster than SSD technology, current mm -hmm. SSD drives, which top out at about six gigabyte per second. This is actually supposed to be a little faster at transferring because of the way it's. Oh, so it is attached. an SSD card. Because it drive, uses. Right? Yes, but it's a card drive, and it uses the M2 slot. It's not yeah. using... How big is it? Uh, one oh, this one's a terabyte. Terabyte, okay. So, which is reasonably good, mm -hmm. but I'll be honest with you, one of the things I'll probably do within a year to two years, I'll be buying a two terabyte, and then I actually have to take it apart, but it's not as hard. I went, to, I researched that. Mm -hmm. Basically, several screws, screws underneath, and it pops apart much easier than some that you have to use the scribe to pry it apart and pray that you don't yeah. pop the pins. Z-Book, I don't know if, uh, how difficult uh, because it is. To get to the drive memory or anything, you have to take it apart. So they've made right. it a little bit easier to take apart. Mm -hmm. And it's nice because somebody can't get into a compartment and steal it. They have to completely take it apart and decide to run off with it, one right. of the two. So it's good and it's bad. I wish they had the, the drive compartments, but got to remember, they're making these thinner to make them lighter and uh, take up less room. Could you mention the uh, price range so people get Price range idea. is going to be around 18 Okay. Uh, 1800 uh, plus or minus, depending on what you get. This one I got with 32 gig, which mm -hmm. is the more memory you can get, the better. Yep. Uh, they have a lot of Especially them for sale right now where they've reduced stuff. them with 16 gig. That's going to work fairly well, but you can tell the difference when you're using something like Lightroom or... Well, that's uh, what got me the Z-Book. Some of them, they were selling the cheaper ones for with 4 gigs. And I go, well, you got yeah. a computer that powerful and that low memory. I'll be has. honest, within this range, I've seen only really three being sold. And mostly it's the older 13 inch that are selling with 8 gig, mm -hmm. I'd say about 95 or more percent of them are being uh, sold with, with 16 or 32. 16, and then a, a smaller group is being sold with 32. Right. I got lucky because I was looking for one specifically, and I found this model, and like I said, they had two of them. Actually, this was nice because I always love a deal, and I'll share this with you. The store, when I went in, they said, well, we don't have any here. You'd have to order them. Oh, wait a minute. We have an open box somebody broke back. Ah. And we always wipe them out and put them right back to factory. I inspected it. Nothing wrong. No damage. They said still, same warranty. So they knocked 250 bucks off. Wow. So I got it in the $1,700 range, go. which is much better. Uh, and this one was the, the model up, which would have been more expensive with the touch screen than right. the non-touch screen. So it was a win-win. It was actually mm -hmm. less expensive than the, the little bit lesser model that I was thinking about getting. So if and anybody I, else is yeah. using the XPS, please Let leave them in the comments below. We really appreciate it if you subscribe right. to our YouTube channel. My only my only minus was where the speakers were placed, but like I said, that's well, not the my Z-Book was content. the same thing, and right. uh, if I'm using this while traveling on a plane or something, I'm going to be using headphones anyway. Well, I was going to so say, with same. headphones, oh my gosh, you no can problem. get some amazing uh, surround and spatial yep. sounding. And like I said, there's at least two apps on here, one by Dell and one uh, that's put out, uh, I think, by either Intel. I can't remember which. Mm -hmm. But it actually uh, gives you a, amazing sound. You've got two to choose from. Mm -hmm. One really more for, probably for gaming and one for, like, videos and movie. And if you're using, if you're doing video editing, it's great for that because you can mm -hmm. really hear it pretty well and get a good idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, the other thing I would say is... Um, that this card thing could have been, I think, done a little differently, but all, all in all, it was it was about a $24 purchase to get that piece, and I, all I can put in it is the little micro SD cards. Mm -hmm. But I've got a, a terabyte in there, yep. so I have a lot of additional storage. Well, I was thinking about for transferring your images from SD cards. From and, and I can do, like I said... If you've got a compact flash card, I can pop that out. Yeah, I'd have to have an That's adapter. That's why I was asking if you could use a full-size to yeah, I can use a full... I've already put a full-size SD in there. Uh, it works fine, but you cannot, of course, compact flash. I thought it would be. Yeah. yeah, the problem with compact flash, that's pretty much gone absent from laptops, I've noticed. They just, right, you have to use an external... You have to use an external card yeah. reader. But then and again... cameras 
also seem to be moving toward SD. So yeah, but the nice thing about it, if you got a card reader, as long as it's a a USB 3.0 or 3.1, it's kind of fly. Sure. Uh, very fast speeds, and they call the uh, 3.1 the super speeds yep. on the USB. So well. It's it's not that I'm singing the glory that this this is what you should buy over anything. He happened to land on the HP. I went with the Dell. Mm-hmm. You go with what is going to suit your needs. I basically sat down and thought about this carefully, looked around. I had looked at the HP Omen mm-hmm. and was very close to that. It was between these two, and sometimes it's price point that's going to help win it because they were pretty much identical machines. Well, again, if people will leave yeah. their feedback, what sure. you like, why you don't, if you're using the Dell or the HP ZBook, uh, the G4 or X2. Or if you're using any of the other high-end laptops out there. Acer has one. Everybody has what they call a high-end gaming. But you want to make sure it's not just great for games, but it's Mm -hmm. great for doing what we're doing with photography and video. So that's it. we got the Altar and the Dell. Yes. And uh, we're going to do more on this. Uh, There's not a whole lot, but we're going to show you and talk to you later about how well it works out. So thank you. And again... Please go out and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We would appreciate it. We really need the subscribers.